Hi everyone. It's been a while since I've made a video. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'd like to point out that I'm not an expert. I don't have any insight into what's really going on on this earth. I'm pretty ignorant and I'm a lot like you. I think the only difference is that I decided to make a few videos and post them. So I don't claim to be an expert. And one thing I'm a little bit horrified by is that maybe people will come to my channel looking to me <coughs> for answers as somebody that has answers. <coughs> and I don't. I'm just a guy. And I have a modest existence. I'm a, I'm a parent. I'm an employee. <coughs> I'm not a rich guy. And so I'm just, I, I'm just like you. And I'm bound to get things wrong. I think a lot of mistakes I see people making when they have a YouTube channel is to speak as if they have the answers to everything and I don't. But I am looking for those answers. So 200, 250 years ago some mud flood event happened. Some inexplicable mud flood event because we don't have any historical explanation of what went, what happened. All we're given is an evolutionary chart that said we evolved from monkeys and that our earliest civilizations were 6,000 8,000 years ago in Sumeria things like this and that dinosaurs used to roam the earth and that the earth is a spinning ball and I want to get past just being critical and just pointing the finger and judging because if someone said to me look we'll give you power over the whole earth and it's up to you to fix all the problems and you can make it better could I actually do that would I have all the answers to know how to fix all those things my point is that even the people you probably don't like the leaders of this world the leaders you can't see it'd be very easy to criticize them but if you're actually put it if you're put in their shoes you might actually have a difficult time implementing all the change you want to see happen these are other people after all they may be good people they may be bad people but they're other people they're bound to make mistakes even with the best intentions so I want to be a little bit mature about this but with that said I still do have some criticisms there's a saying that goes like this. You might have heard it before. The problem is not that you lied to me. It's that I no longer believe you. I'll say it again. The problem is not that you lied to me. It's that I no longer believe you. The problem I have in my own life is exactly like this. I look at the history books. I don't believe it. And the problem is not that you lied to me, is that I don't believe anything you say anymore. I don't believe we evolved from monkeys. I don't believe our first civilizations were 6,000 to 8,000 years ago. I don't believe the Earth is a spinning ball. I don't know how it works, but I know that what you're telling me isn't true. So I only ask, what else is it that you aren't telling me? But also from a more practical perspective, we're, we're bound every day to get up and go to work and earn, earn incomes and pay taxes and pay for expenses and sometimes I wonder whether the pretenses for getting up and working every day in the system that we're in is actually premised on the, his, the history that's presented in universities and colleges now that stands to have an argument made for it and be explained a little bit better. I may not know the origin of where people came from. I don't know where we came from. I don't know if our souls existed for the first time here on earth or whether they existed somewhere else before. 
I don't know if we're captured souls and put into human bodies. These are things I speculate, but I don't know these things. But one thing I am quite certain of is that I don't know, and that I'm being intentionally kept ignorant about where it is I came from as a soul, as a being. And I don't consent to that. I think if I'm to be here on Earth, there should be disclosure as to how it is I got here, what it is I'm doing here, and if I'm going through problems and struggle, and if it's punishment for maybe a past life existence or something like that, I, I could fully accept that, but I would have to be given disclosure as to what's going on here. I'll try and use an analogy an analogy to explain the next point I have. Take one sector of the economy, say automotive production, so building cars. The complexity of that single industry is mind-blowing, right? All the individual components in a car have to be made and produced and mined. So for, exa for example, you know, the tires on a car has to be grown with rubber. I don't know if they can synthesize most rubber. I, I sh maybe I shouldn't use that as an example. But steel making, steel making, there's a huge process in involved in producing automotive steel. And then you get beyond the steel making, there's a mining industry on how to acquire the natural resources to build the car and then there's all kinds of things involved in the car like the electronics involved, the computer system, the emissions and and the complexity of parts is just mind-blowing not to mention when you go into a facility that builds cars you know mention any name brand of vehicle the sophistication of the equipment used to manufacture cars is mind-blowing. So the, the level of sophistication in producing consumer goods like cars or computers or anything else you can come up with is highly highly complex. It takes very intelligent minds to design such things. And industry is is vastly technical. But, as people, as a society, we cannot answer some very basic questions. Where it is we came from, what we're doing here, where we were before, and where we are going. These are simple questions. There might be spiritual answers to such things that our minds maybe are unable to comprehend. But nevertheless, to me, these should be very simple questions to answer. These shouldn't be a mystery. So why did I just talk about those two things? So you take the automotive industry, highly technical, highly sophisticated industry that takes a lot of brain power and intelligence and generations of trial and error to produce something like that. And we as people are very sophisticated and can develop and design and engineer very complex systems, but we can't answer very simple questions. Who are we? Where do we come from? Where are we going? Hopefully I, I've made my point understandable, but to me this is the most ridiculous paradox of human existence. And that is that we can do all these wonderfully sophisticated and amazing things and yet we cannot answer some very basic questions. This leads me to believe that we are intentionally being lied to about the true nature of our history and we don't have disclosure. And what's worse is I think that this state of ignorance that people are kept in is advantageous to the people who are ever who are running 
this earth. And yes, there are elected politicians. And if you're into conspiracy theories, there are people behind the scenes running things. You can name your group, name your religious institution or fraternal benefit group, and you could say, well, it's these people. Fine. I'm not going to say the names. I think you know what I'm talking about. Just add your secretive group here. So, I don't consent to this. I don't accept this. And to me, the fact that people are starting to catch on that there was some type of mud flood, which also implicates some cataclysmic, catastrophic event that happened in the not-too-distant past. Now we have grounds to actually go by they actually start questioning. So when I see that the history isn't accurate, the nature of the Earth, the cosmology, the nature of the stars, firmament, when I see that's wrong, then I just say, well, what else are you lying about? What else aren't you telling me? And if I did know how things actually worked, would I get up every day and go to work at a low-paying job with deductions? Would I still have the motivation to do that? Something makes me think I wouldn't. Here's another thought I've had. If you want the answers to questions you have about anything in life, there are answers. You can go on Google, you can type it in, and particularly Wikipedia. Wikipedia will give you answers to anything you can ask about. Now I understand that people can contribute to Wikipedia. People can submit articles, but what I find a little bit hard to believe is that there's enough people writing and contributing to Wikipedia to give us comprehension on every subject we could possibly ponder. I mean, just from a practical point of view, to constantly create an encyclopedic entry for every possible possible fathomable subject that you could ponder, you would have to have a team of many, many qualified, intelligent, well-spoken, well-read people to come up with articles on any subject you could ponder. So Wikipedia, to me, is a really strange one because it's very politically correct, and yet there are seemingly answers to everything you could ask. So I'm wondering, like, who maintains that? Who edits that? Who's the editor for Wikipedia? Who decides how you come to understand the world around you? This almost doesn't make any sense to me. The manpower and effort it would take to maintain something like Wikipedia would take an office building filled with thousands of people to maintain and present reality in a certain way. So I ask questions, who's doing that? Now, I read the Bible myself, and I felt like I really should be making a video on that and, and promoting it. Now the thing is, I know when you hear that, if, you, if you're not into the Bible or church, I know right away the things that come to your mind and a lot of people don't like it. They think of church and the hypocrisy of church and the institutionalized nature of church and the very arrogant, holier-than-thou people that go to church. Well, I, I know exactly the type of people you're thinking about and exactly the type of institution that you don't like if you're thinking about the church. I'm not saying this very well. The thing is, I actually still read the Bible, I still believe in Jesus Christ, and I still have faith. But that's about the only thing I believe in. I've got a lot of questions about the nature of churches and even the Bible. Now, I don't want to criticize the Bible too much, but... Well, it's like this. I have faith in Jesus Christ. 
and that the spiritual things in, in his parables he taught are true and valid. But what I have a problem with is that I don't think the Bible is necessarily describing a world that I am currently living in. So I'm not critiquing the Bible, but it's like this. All of the events discussed in the New Testament, particularly the Gospels, where did this take place? When did this take place? When did this happen? I don't have answers to this. What's interesting to me about the Bible as well is that there's a lot of things it doesn't discuss. It doesn't discuss the current government system we have, the tax system, right? So if you want answers to those types of questions, where are you going to get from the Bible? You, you know, there's a quote in the Bible that says, give Caesar what Caesar is due. Well, what does that mean? The Bible does not teach you how to navigate the current government system and system of control that is imposed upon everybody. It doesn't address that. Not that I can tell. Not explicitly, anyway. Some Christian might come along and give a few quotes and say, well, here's where it says this or that, but it, not explicitly. Another problem I have, it's it's one thing I notice the Bible doesn't talk about. It doesn't say people get up every day and go to work and come home tired and then do it all over again the next day. It doesn't say that that's how people live their lives in the Bible. The disciples did not come home at the end of the day overworked and tired and then have to look after their kids. Stories like this don't exist in the New Testament. And yet, this is a book that supposedly is supposed to give you all of the answers to the problems you face. And my argument is actually that it really doesn't give a lot of insight into these problems that a lot, a lot, a lot of a lot of us go through. Excuse me. Now I'm not rejecting the Bible, but the only thing I do still believe in the Bible is Jesus Christ and salvation and having faith and believing. That's it. I don't believe in any of the churches that have come up around that book, and I even question as to whether the book has been edited and altered. And there are reasons to think that because all the names for God have been changed to either Lord or God and that's not originally what it, it says and there's some issues I have between the Old Testament and the New Testament but what I'm really what I'm really getting at is that there's a lack of disclosure about the nature of the world we live in historically through colleges and university and academia as to how history happened, but also if you go to something like the Bible, which has uh, spiritual answers, but even then it doesn't really address the current system of reality we live in. I'm switching the subject now, and this will take a little while to explain, and I can't guarantee it'll be entertaining or exciting, but it'll prove a point. I, the only way I can deliver the message is just to just to speak and fumble through it so okay I I used to have a business and we used to do drywall and taping and I had a business partner things went okay it was a lot more work running a business than it than it was if you just worked for a company and work my hour or subcontracting it was it was a lot harder to own and operate your own business but anyway we gave it a try it we ended up burning out a little bit realizing that it was more effort than it was worth but anyway we used to do contracting so we used to go all over the place to people's homes or job sites or commercial property and and do contracting work taping and drywall and a little bit of framing and maybe painting a little bit. So anyway, we go all over the place. And my partner and I, we realized that wherever we ended up traveling to, we traveled to another city, we'd always get future calls from whatever geographic location we currently happened to have been in. And it was confusing, uh, strange. We'd even say to the homeowner we were currently working for, we'd say, did, did somebody that lives close to you or a neighbor refer you to us? They'd say no. 
because somebody two blocks away just just called us and they want us to come do work for them did you refer us they say no we'd go to Toronto same thing would happen we'd be working for somebody and somebody else close by in Toronto would call us with work and so I said to my business partner I said you know do you realize this is happening wherever we go geographically somebody within close proximity ends up giving us a call for more for more work and he said yeah it's happening he says I don't know how to explain it but it's happening the only and I thought about it for a while the only way I could really explain it is that the way and nature we would get our new contracts or new jobs was defying statistics right and and why am I telling this story now well it's to explain the point that I think a lot of things that happen in your life do not happen statistically they do not happen by chance they do not happen randomly it's only that the illusion around you is that things happen randomly or statistically but it's this contracting story that really proved it to me that now the world around you is not happening by chance right and it was almost like a glitch in the matrix it's like yeah we went to this city and all of a sudden we'd be getting future work and more calls from that geographical proximity then we go to another city the exact same thing would happen there now unfortunately I moved on to other things I spent seven years in drywall and taping and I had had enough of it it drove me crazy and I just wanted a regular steady job so then I've been bouncing around different jobs for the last year always working never at home but always working and one one I one thing I found is having gone through the job application process more times than I care to retell it's that the nature of getting a new job was somewhat similar to the experience I mentioned about contracting it's like you never you never have companies coming to you and saying to you look we need you so bad we just need you come and work for us please we need you it never works like that you always have to apply for jobs you have to go to the employer and apply to them right to me this is a power thing they always want to remind you that it was you who came to us for a job and they want to throw that at you but it never works the other way around where companies are just so desperate for people that they will just grab people off the street and say hey come work for us I've never had this happen maybe that's just me and then another strange circumstance with through applying for jobs I always found that all of a sudden I'd be in a situation where I had applied for two or three different jobs all of those employers would call me back within not only the same day but within the same hour and I would be presented with like this ultimatum in my life as to which different career choice I wanted to go with but it always happened in a funny statistically unusual way in which jobs were presented to me so I know that's not exciting I know that's not a great story but my point is that once again through my experience through trying to obtain work whether it was contracting as a business owner or whether I was just trying to look for hourly labor that the nature of picking up a new job for work was always like this it was statistically impossible in a sense right so this is sort of a mundane example but it's it made me realize that life does not happen randomly by chance or statistically so why did I mention this well this concept that things don't happen in life randomly or statistically well I carry that over to some other ideas I had it makes me wonder whether the authority structure or rich people or people in power you see here ended up in that situation because just randomly by chance they happen to have a successful business model I actually think that something else is going on here I don't know how well I'm going to say it I don't think I will say it well but I will say it so 
questioning the nature of the earth you know public school taught you that it's a spinning ball people a lot of people on the internet coming out and saying it's flat right it's either one or the other or maybe some different reality I haven't fully conceptualized yet but what they're telling you is not the way it works and the mud flood is kind of like that it's something happened and they're just simply not explaining it in in history officially so what blows my mind is that such concepts like the flat earth or mud flood or I made a video on the New Madrid earthquake which is sort of similar to like a cataclysmic event that happened in the past what blows my mind is that these subjects are not getting the kind of attention that I think they demand and warrant okay I'll go ahead and try to make an example and make a proof of this so I, I had an original channel it was called electronics projects which is not really a great name because I wasn't really talking about electronics just the name of my original channel and then I created this video the New Madrid earthquake and I just went to Wikipedia and I went to a few other sources on the internet and just tried to create a video in my own words of what officially the history was and how it didn't seem to make a lot of sense and then I realized that a YouTube search I could search for the new Madrid earthquake my video would come up and then a few others would come up official ones from the US Geological Society in the States and a few other kind of government university type of documentaries on the New Madrid earthquake but what, what blew my mind is supposedly this was the biggest earthquake to ever hit continental North America so and it only happened a couple hundred years ago so you think everybody would have a popular conception a, po a popular idea about this earthquake and yet it seems like something that nobody has ever even heard of right so how could the biggest earthquake in North American history be something that like less than one percent of the population even knows about this to me is like confuses my mind it confuses me because it just it doesn't seem to be statistically accurate it almost seems like a glitch in the matrix like no if this was the biggest earthquake that ever happened everybody would have a historical concept of it and yet nobody has a historical concept of it okay further when I originally had this video on my first channel I have it on my channel now as well but I had it on my first channel when I went looking for it on a YouTube search it would pop up fairly easily but it only had a thousand views so I don't know what the population of North America is but how is it that there are such few videos about the most catastrophic earthquake to ever hit here and yet it only has a thousand views I mean even if I made the worst crappiest no good video that like few people wanted to watch if I'm like the only guy who made a video on this subject it should have more than a thousand views it should have at least a hundred thousand views not because it's a good video but because this was a huge earthquake that every university professor who's into geology and history should at least come across my video and talk about but it's like no no my video got ignored and the entire population of North America ignored the most powerful earthquake that ever hit it and they ignored my little video and there's really like only a handful of videos maybe five or six videos ever made on this subject anyway I made a video on it and it goes virtually ignored to me this is a glitch in the matrix this is not my pride this is not me crying saying hey why didn't you watch my video you should have liked it you should have watched it it was good no no no. I don't care you give it a thumbs down you give a thumbs up I don't really care my point is this is that statistically this doesn't make any sense this was a big earthquake here's a video on it people should be watching it statistically but things don't work that way I'm just saying that things do not work statistically at a certain point things break down and they don't make any sense this reality I have come to understand it as does not work statistically okay I, I also mentioned that I was into electronics before and just looking at an introductory textbook this is going back about three years and first reading it there was an electronics experiment 
where you, you could create with a few integrated circuit chips you could create a dice it's almost like a imagine you went to the dollar store and you bought a cheap little toy that was a dice you know it could roll between digits one and six and as a cheap electronic toy you could push a button and it would randomly roll a number that's almost like what this experiment that was in this introductory electro electronics textbook was showing. Now one thing it mentioned in this textbook about this electronic dice you could build is that randomnessity, randomnessity is almost impossible to create using electronics or say software programming where you're using a microcontroller to control electronics. Creating something to happen randomly is near impossible. Even if the chances are one in a thousand, the chances you can't create something that is entirely random. It's impossible. It cannot be done. Now that's a bit of a conundrum, and you'd have to think this one through yourself. I don't know if I've explained it well enough, but in electronics, you cannot create a circuit that behaves randomly. It can have a million combinations that your mind will never be able to comprehend, but things don't work randomly. So, this is one thing that I have kind of noticed about the nature of reality, is that it does not work randomly. And you can, you can look at areas, you might have a few mundane examples in your own life where you can look at it and say, yeah, it's, it's, working, it's not working uh, randomly like it should. I've noticed this, again, in job opportunities. I also know that one thing that's happened in my life, when you run into a person, or say you work with a person, or you're friends with a person, chances are you end up seeing those same people in the grocery store when you go grocery shopping, in the mall when you go there. If you go on vacation, you'll see people that you know, and statistically that doesn't make any sense either. You shouldn't be running into these familiar people all the time. I'm changing the subject once again. I mentioned how I believe in the Bible. I have faith in Christ. If if that's not your thing, I understand. I'm not preaching to you. That's about the only thing I have faith left in, though, is belief in Christ and his parables and the spiritual teachings he had. I don't believe in the church. I don't believe in anything else that goes with it. And I don't even congregate with other Christians. Your relationship is between you and God and nobody else. Right? So that's why I would never go to a church. You might have a difference of opinion. I'm not preaching. Okay, I lost my train of thought thought I forgot why I was going to talk about the Bible. But anyway, one of the points I wanted to make, just given the things I've said already, it's this. Whether it's flat earth, whether it's the mud flood, these should be things that, once woken up to, the vast majority of people should be talking about. There almost should be a revolution overnight where people start talking about the flat earth and then it's like the major source of discussion in every single workplace, in every single home, in every single community. And it isn't. Even if you wanted to continue believing in the ball earth that's spinning, even if that's something you were going to hold to and believe, it should still be a topic of conversation that people out there are saying the earth is flat. Can't you believe how ridiculous that is? Listen to that. I mean, it should still be a topic of conversation. Well, I'll tell you, within the last, well, since 2014, 2015, when Flat Earth, Flat Earth started coming out, I can tell you that in the vast majority of workplaces, I have only heard the Flat Earth mentioned maybe a handful of times. It's, it's not a topic of conversation. So something statistically is wonky, is messed up with the matrix, because these pressing topics should be the biggest thing that anybody can discuss. They should be the most important thing anybody should be looking into, and yet people are ignoring it. And it gets ignored. I, my brain cannot even fathom why this is the case. Once again, I can only conclude that this reality around us is not happening randomly or statistically. Because I think if it did, such a fundamental question as to the shape of the earth should be like 
talked about by virtually everybody. Everybody on the bus should be talking about it when you go ride the bus. It should be like the biggest thing, but people aren't talking about it. Now this is completely delusional and crazy, but I'm, I've almost been pushed to thinking that, look, if the average person is not questioning the nature of the reality or their origin or where it is they come from and where they're going, then I actually start to wonder whether the people around me are as human as I am, whether they are endowed with a soul and critical thinking ability in the same way that I am. I can only conclude that they aren't. They might be a soul, but I don't think that there's like, I think they're operating on like a code or something. They get up every day, they brush their teeth, they get dressed, they go to work, they come home, and that's it. They go turn the switch and they go off. I don't think they, the average person has critical thinking ability. If they did have critical thinking ability, they would be looking at things like the flat earth. They would be questioning why it, questioning why it is they get up and go to work every day and pay taxes and then die at some point. People aren't asking these questions. So, and, and, and here, here's what blows my mind. On the weekend, I go to the mall, and I try to stay away from the mall. I don't like it. There's nothing in the mall that I even want. But it seems like a good vast majority of people have nothing better to do with their time than to go spend time at the mall looking at things they don't need. It's like, I, I don't even think that people... I don't know. Maybe I didn't explain that one very well. Or even mun, excuse me, even more mundane, mundane things like, like, go to the store. Go to the store that sells any type of product. Where's most of it made? China. Eighty, ninety percent of plastic or you know usable goods are made in China. Then ask yourself. Okay, well, say to yourself, well, I want to import things from China. I'm going to go to China. I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff. I'm going to throw it in a container ship. I'm going to ship it to myself. I'm going to put the container ship in my backyard, and I'm going to sell things out of the container ship, and I'm going to sell things to people from China. No, you can't do that. The only people that are allowed to do that are big businesses like Walmart or big, big box stores. So is this a free, open economy where anybody can can get involved in and, and sell things and, and get engaged? No. No. There's only a certain number of people who have the ability to do cross-dock shipping and you're not going, if you're the average person, you're not going to be allowed to do that. The only thing you're allowed to do is to consume it, right? And even the availability of what goods you are allowed to purchase is heavily regulated. So, I don't know, the point I'm making is that I, I don't know how this reality, this world, this matrix system happens around me, how it works, I don't know that. But I know that it doesn't work statistically, it doesn't work randomly. Here's another thing. I talked about in a previous video, you know, whether or not we own our own bodies. Right? And my opinion is that we are all in a state of duress. Right? Would you be respectful to that police officer who was pulling you over and giving you a ticket? if you didn't think that there would be some repercussion? I mean, if you knew you could just mouth off the police officer and continue driving away without being harassed, or would you just drive away? I think you would. I don't think you'd stop and put up with it. Put up with it. So the only reason you might be polite and nice to the police officer is because you're worried about what he can do or what she can do to you. They could detain you, they can put you in jail, they can fine you, they can seize your property. Right? So by extension, I ask, how much of your own behavior in your in your daily life is governed or motivated by the fact that you're in a state of duress? Like, would you go to work if you didn't think that if you didn't pay your bills, somebody would come and take your house? Right? So I don't think there is free will here. I think a lot of our decisions on a daily basis are motivated by the fact that our property can be seized or we can be detained. Right? So a lot of our lives and our existence are against our own wills. Right? So to me, whatever this is that we're living in, this reality, whether it's a matrix or whether it is just physical, I mean, it's a real reality. I'm not going to take away and try to say we're in some kind of dreamland. It is real. So long as we're bound by it, it is real. You can't escape it, so it's real. But it's it doesn't happen randomly, and... and and we don't have disclosure for the very simple fundamental questions as to where we came from. 
right? I would accept it. If for some reason, I, I might not be the greatest guy. I don't want to come on here and be like some kind of prophet and tell you how to live your lives and be moral and all this kind of stuff. I try my best, I really do, but I'm not perfect and I don't want to be the one to tell you I am. But it's like this. Well, I got sidetracked. One point I really wanted to make is, is like this. Is if you have a drug, a drug problem, I don't, I don't use drugs, but if you have a drug problem, there is support groups and there's help groups for that. If you are obese and you are fat and you overeat, then there are groups that are out there to help you with that, right? If you have a drinking problem, same thing. There's Alcoholics Anonymous. There's a lot of human problems that you can have support groups for. Mental illness, there's a lot of support groups and help for that. If you have financial problems, there are even some support groups for that. You know, there's like, in Ontario, it's, you know, public works. There are safety nets to prevent people from completely, you know, going into abject poverty. But if you have a problem with the nature of reality and the nature of our history as to what we've been told, there is no support group for that. If you have a problem with history, if you have a problem with what's being ta taught in schools, and you have a problem with that, there is no support group. There is nobody that is going to, first of all, accept your grievance. Okay, You'll probably get classified <coughs> as crazy and there are mental institutions where they'll put you in. So the truth, whatever the truth is, I'm not saying I know the full truth, but I know what I'm given is, is false and are lies. But if you are going to try to penetrate what the real truth is, well, they have a special place for you. And, you know, that's the mental institutions and psychiatric hospitals, right? So the truth has been made to look crazy. So to me, this is a little bit like psychological torture. You're going to torture everybody who starts to have some clue or starts to clue into the true nature of our reality and our existence, right? And to me, this is unjust. This is unjust. First of all, we haven't been given disclosure of who we are, where we came from, where we're going, what type of realm we're living in right and then if you do get to the truth well they'll call you crazy so this is this is almost like a slow small or this is like slow psychological torture and it seems like the only escape is death right and I'm not suicidal and I'm not so grim that you know I'm hopeful for death but it's like no this present reality isn't going to recognize your grievances about the nature of its history Okay, folks, so thank you for listening. I've had a lot of life demands right now, so I, I can't make videos. I do appreciate you listening. One of the risks I take in making these videos is that it's not necessarily going to agree with the paradigm of other people making videos on this similar subject. I'm not even sure how much I've even talked about mud flood. I've talked about a whole lot of other things. But to me, there's more to just flat earth or the mud flood. There's like implications behind it even like the mud flood so a mud flood happened 200 250 years ago so what what does it mean to me what difference does it make well it does make a difference because if you go to your land title office whatever form that takes in your country you live in and you go look at title to most of the uh, expensive real estate in your major city then I ask like how did the rich people that own most of the commercial property end up acquiring it in the first place right I'm not going to name it specifically I could but there's a property management company in the city I live in and they own virtually the lion's share of all rental income property and it just blows my mind I say to myself how do they own everything how do they own apartment complex upon apartment complex right and then think about it this way if you own an apartment complex, a good vast majority of the people renting in that building are on fixed income anyway. They're getting money from the government. So you're taking public tax money, government money, you're giving it to these private landlords who own virtually most of the rental property in the city I live in. I don't understand how this is democratic. To me, this is feudalism, right? And I don't know you know, historically there's an explanation that we used to live in a feudal system. I don't even know if that's true. I'm questioning that. 
but mud flood would implicate that you know something <coughs> inundated everything, maybe destroyed everything at some time in the past, and so I can only assume that the people who own the most expensive and valuable commercial property in every major city probably were there at the beginning and took the best, juiciest, most <coughs> income-producing properties you could possibly get. Like, if you go to Toronto and you look at some of the most expensive commercial property there, if you own that, if you own the most expensive commercial property, you own the bank buildings, you're never going to give that up. You would be a fool. You would never sell it. You are guaranteed income so long as you own that. You're set for life, right? But my question is, okay, so a mud flood happened. Okay, so then after the mud flood, who took all the best property? And the people that took all the best property essentially were all paying rent to them. <coughs> right? That's why the mud flood is important. Well, folks, thank you very much for listening. It's been a rant. It's been crazy talk. But these are a lot of the ideas that have been bouncing around in my mind for the longest time. And I just couldn't possibly think of how to take them and put them into a single coherent video and have it make logical sense. So I hope it has made sense. If you don't agree with everything I say, that's fine. I am just another guy. And I encourage people to, to make videos. If you, if you have an idea and you think it will change and affect the perception in, in a positive way, then please make a video. And another thing I want to say is that I don't like to be negative. I know a lot of the things that I talk about are probably psychologically damaging. And this is one of the things that I really struggle with because I think, well, if I make a video and it says, you know, like say the New Madrid earthquake video, is that good for people? Is that something people should hear? Is that going to positively help people? Or is it going to make them more pessimistic and negative and sad? Um, I actually happen to think it probably is a negative message. So I struggle with that. You know, I don't want to be a negative sad depressed person but unfortunately the subject matter mud flood historical cataclysms things like that are not nice topics so I don't know if there's any way around it so thank you for listening I don't have all the answers but thanks for listening I'm just another guy so have a good day take care <coughs>